Shalom, everyone. This is Amir Tsarfati, and I am live from my home in Galilee. And today with me is Pastor Mike Gole, Nick Di Giovanni, and Pastor Jeff Quazo from uh, the UK. Nick is from Canada, Mike is from the US, and I'm from Israel. And we together will discuss the topic of how close are we to the mark of the beast. It's something that uh, captured the imagination of many people. It also bothered a lot of bothers a lot of believers nowadays when it comes to new technologies that are being introduced to us, some of them in a direct way, some of them in an indirect way. But before we do that, I would like all of us together to consider what the word of God says about the mark of the beast. And so please, let, uh, let's put on the screen the verses. We're going to read them together and then discuss them. So I'm going to start with the first time we hear about this uh, mark of the beast. And that is, of course, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I'm going to bring on the screen um, two, uh, two um, verses, uh, excuse me. And, excuse me, four verses, and we're going to read together uh, those verses. So, it was granted to him to make war with the saints, and we're talking about uh, the uh, Antichrist, and to have a war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, and all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose name have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we see those verses and then we move on to Revelation chapter 16. In Revelation chapter 16, let me read to you from verse 2. We can see this first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. So we can see there is a great judgment and punishment upon those who already received the mark of the beast. And then we're moving all the way to Revelation. Um, by the way, I did, I, 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 I forgot to read to you from Revelation 17 and 18, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then, of course, comes, um, and, and then, of course, excuse me, comes uh, after that the, uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, we are talking about the very end of the chapter, of chapter 13. Um uh, just a second. Let me uh, go back to see chapter 13. Uh, we read all the way that one. So now we're moving to um, to the um, chapter 19, okay? And in chapter 19, after we read these two portions, we can clearly see um, the following. And I'm reading from chapter 19, verse 20. And then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And then, of course, I'm going to read to you, uh, the last verse, and that is, of course, from Revelation chapter 20, and this is verse 4, and it says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. 
And then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So we can definitely see that in the book of Revelation, in chapter 13, we see for the first time the uh, appearance of two beasts. One is coming out of the sea, and one is already on earth, but is now coming to cause those on earth to worship the one who came from the sea. And this is, of course, the Antichrist that is rising out of nowhere, in a sense, because he wasn't there before. And the false prophet that must have been a religious leader who's been here already for a while, he is not coming out of the sea. He is on earth, and he is yet uh, the one that is, uh, in a sense, proclaiming the uh, uh, belief and, 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 and the mark of the beast as, as a sign of much more than a financial, political, but more so a spiritual mark. And this is where we are, folks. We are talking about the seven years tribulation towards the um, a end of the first half. We are watching a certain event that is going to happen. And that is, of course, total domination of the population of the world by which uh, they will be... Um, uh, they will be... Uh, uh, I would say... Uh, uh, given no chance but to receive a mark on their hand and on their forehead. And let me make it very clear. Satan is always trying to mimic and imitate God. He's always, he wants to be like the Most High, as Isaiah 14 says. And it's interesting because when the Lord said to the people of Israel uh, to love the Lord all, with all of their heart, mind, soul, he also says you shall have the word of God on your arms and between your eyes. That is, of course, the explanation for what you see that the Jews are wrapping with the leather stripe around their arm. And they wrap it right here, a box that you see right on their forehead. And what is the Antichrist is demanding the people to do? The same thing. It's a, another um, way to deceive people and to think that they actually worship the Lord God of Israel. So we're watching something very interesting that is going to happen. We are watching something that has political, economical, and spiritual significance. And uh, now I'm going to bring to this discussion uh, other members of our ministry. We have Nick from Canada, and I'm going to add you, Nick, right now to our um, to our. Uh, uh, screen. Uh, so just a minute, Nick. Here you are. Nick Di Giovanni, you're all, uh, uh, you should be on the screen with me. Uh, we're going to add Jeff Quazo from the UK. He's our rep in the UK and in Europe. And Jeff, let me uh, add you to the screen as well. And of course, Michael Lay, Pastor Michael Lay, our, um, our uh, of operation manager, Director of Operations of the Ministry from Jordan, Minnesota. And gentlemen, we are here live from the four corners of the world, basically. And all of you have tremendous knowledge and input to give to the many, many thousands of people that are now watching us from so many different countries around the world regarding the mark of the beast. So we're going to start with the thing that triggered me to want to give this update today. And that is, of course, that which everybody is speaking about because of the coronavirus. Um, and that is uh, Bill Gates association with stepping down from Microsoft first and becoming uh, a philanthropist that is more into talking about pandemics and about vaccination and more so into new technologies that will help the third world 
to be part of the second and the first one when it comes to um, ID. And therefore, I ask you, Jeff, to give us an, an, an idea on what is ID 2020. Hmm. Everybody is now suspecting to be the closest thing to the mark of the beast. So enlighten us, Jeff. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's, you know, it's, it's, it's a fair question that people are asking, obviously, because we as Bible students have been studying this for years and we've been told that these things are coming. And, and again, granted, a lot of the, the technology and the stuff that we, you know, have been teaching for 20, 30 years yet wasn't really possible you know, all those years ago, so we'd have a lot of questions, and all of a sudden, technology's ramping up so rapidly, and we're seeing stuff happen so quickly that I could see where people would be you know, concerned. However, you know, when we talk about ID 2020, what we find is that the, the, the ultimate goal that they would proclaim is that there are 1.1 billion people around the planet who actually are without any form of ID, and because of that, there, that you know, ID is kind of well, vital really for political, economic, and social opportunities. Well, in some in some states in America, ID is not that vital to vote. But <laughs> never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Well, they're they're working on that too, aren't they? Yes. Anyway, so point being, you know, for a lot of people, that you know, whether refugees or underdeveloped countries, you know, their access to certain amenities are, are challenged by not having an ID, and so that's the that's the premise anyway that's being mm -hmm. presented of why there's this need for a a digital or an international kind of ID that would be recognizable kind of across the board. In 2015, the UN, you know, member states adopted a, a 2030 a sustainable <laughs> development goals. And, and including in those development goals is this idea of providing legal identity for all, including birth registration by 2030. So there is a kind of agenda on the table of trying to keep everybody, well, you know, having a digital idea of some descript. So you're talking about a UN uh, uh, basically grand plan that is now being taken by a private entity to uh, mm -hmm. introduce a way to create ID to a billion and a half people that don't have a, a proper ID. And, and how are they planning on doing that technologically? <laughs> I mean, why is it something that raises the red flag immediately? Exactly, exactly. So a couple things. One, there's there's two components, really. One is just this idea of having something, well, as, as you know, you might be aware, and I know others definitely are as well, um, this microchip. There is the possibility of having a microchip that can be implanted. Uh, there's some also other technology they're talking about right now of a quantum dot tattoo that's being worked on at Rice University, where it's something that could be, you know, applying some sort of um, kind of mark that's helping to know if somebody has actually had a vaccine or an immunization, whether they have or whether they haven't or whether they've had enough. So you could kind of scan that and check it. So mm -hmm. that kind of stuff's being worked on to be able to track and figure out if people are being immunized with the way they need to be, you know, in these um, third world regions. So basically what you're saying, Jeff, is that this whole pandemic world is going through right now is preparing the ground and the hearts of the people to somewhat uh, want to have the world ID'd hmm. by ways of vaccination for the sake of a broader and a greater knowledge of how to fight the next pandemic in a way. You, you know, I think we're seeing this. I mean, even in the UK today, I saw the, the headline you know, using a, a maybe an app now, right? And I know it's being used across the planet in other countries already, this idea of being able to report where you've been and, and this tracking of, of your whereabouts and, and your movements. And of yeah, course- Yeah, but that app is gonna be on your phone. Right. And the ID 2020 is not about your phone, is about your body, am I right? Exactly. And this is the point, people for the purpose of health and safety, it appears, are willing to compromise a lot of their actual freedoms just for that sense of peace and, and safety that you're gonna look after us, so you're gonna take care of us. Okay, we'll do whatever it takes to, to be mm -hmm. safe and yet. You know, what you just said brings a, a new meaning to the verses in First Thessalonians 5. So when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. 
because when I think about it, the mark of the beast will just bring sudden destruction upon these people. Mm. Certainly not um, peace and safety. Mm. Um, wow. Um, Nick Di Giovanni, our Canada uh, rep, um, BI Canada. Nick, how are you? Good, thank you. And hello to everyone. Shalom. Just so you know, we all are wearing black shirts. Nick's camera <laughs> is purple. Um, Nick, um, tell us, um, why is it so important for us today to study about something that all of us here on this screen agree that it's going to be part of the Great Tribulation, which is not for the church? So t tell me, why is it that you think that uh, it's important that we, we look at it right now. Well, what we're seeing um, are precursors to uh, events that the Bible talks about happening within the middle of the tribulation, around that three and a half year mark. And therefore, if we see these things that could potentially become a mark mm -hmm. uh, at this time, how much closer are we really? Because anything, let's say the church is raptured today, Okay. These events don't happen till three and a half years from now, approximately. Mm -hmm. So we are much closer than than what it appears. Um, and, it'll take, and it'll take anyway at least two years to to get to the population of the whole world with the technology that will be implemented into all of them anyway. It could be even quicker because they could use this pretense of a national lo um, global worldwide pandemic, pandemic yeah. global. Uh, to say we need to track who's got a vaccination and who doesn't. Now, not saying vaccinations are bad, but they will use that opportunity to possibly implant. There's also studies showing that they've done fingerprint testing, and it used to be believed that, that as a young child, fingerprints are too soft and they don't get a mark. But with the increased technology, they're finding that they're successful with that as well. So that's that's another method that seems to be uh, used. I see. Yeah. So um, you're basically saying it's not that far from now that the people are going to have it and therefore um, it's good for us today not only to talk about it but to warn, not to warn against it because it's going to happen, but to expose it for the sake of those who unfortunately will not be taken and they will have to understand what they're going to face. Um, we all agree on this screen right now, ladies and gentlemen, we all agree that the mark of the beast is something reserved for the population of the world during the time of the reign of the Antichrist because it is in the portion of the book of Revelation that speaks of the great tribulation. It starts in chapter 13 when the church is no longer on earth. The church is with Jesus in heaven. The church was taken in chapter 4 of Revelation, verse 1, when John was taken up. And there, there we're out of here. Now, why is it that we need to understand and teach and study that? A, because God decided it's going to be in the book of Revelation, which means we need to. B, because God said to those who teach and study the book of Revelation that they will be blessed. And, and the most important thing is God is not allowing us to either add or to take away anything from the book of Revelation or else we are going to be counted as non-believers and the things that are written in the book of Revelation that will happen to non-believers will come upon us. So it's important that we understand that we have the duty to teach and to study the book of Revelation, even the portions that are not directly speaking about us, but they are directly speaking about those in the world and what we can see from up there that is going on. And Pastor Mike, what is it in your opinion that is the main reason for us today to study something that will actually not affect us personally as believers? Because as believers now, just at the cusp of what we believe to be the rapture occurring some in, sometime in the near future, we are able to read the signs of what God already said in Scripture. 
And because those signs are so clear in the scripture and so vast across the platform of this world, we can then lead people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ now. And these signs that we see going on all around us, people, non-believers that I speak to, when I talk to them about prophecy, they have this response. Oh, my goodness. Well, they'll say something like OMG or something like that. They are very uh, fascinated by this. One of the verses that we want to focus on today is the, the passage from Revelation chapter 13. And this is something I speak to a lot of people about because it's so popular in pop culture. You're talking about the number itself. Yeah, it's, and I'm going to read the passage. Go this ahead. is from the New King James. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. Wow. So, Mike, I know that unlike many, many people, um, you think you may have figured out what the 666 <laughs> is all about. Look, uh, you probably won't hear, 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 uh, hear this in a lot of places. And I won't, uh, if you put a gun to my head, I don't know if I would die for this one, but I didn't pull it out of the air. Uh, this is coming from my time I spent in Israel, eight years, uh, hanging out with my brother-in-law, Amir, up in the left top corner. <laughs> and the number is defined in the text. Could it be as simple as just taking it at face value and say saying, that this is a number that represents man. I mean, after all, let me make a brief case. Originally, man came together and built the Tower of Babel. Babel in Hebrew is the kind of name of the, the city that would come of Babylon, and it was in the Hebrew word confusion or melting. The world melted together. They came together. The best of man. And they built this wonderful tower to worship whoever they decided. We've seen this phenomena throughout history. We also know that six represents man. On the sixth day, that's when man came about. God, on the other hand, his name is um, holy. And on the seventh day is the holy day. And that's the, the number of God is seven. Seven in the Hebraic mind is the number of perfection. Now here's where a lot of people lose me. Why three digits? Well, we have a counterfeit God in the book of Revelation with the dragon, the beast, and the, anti, and, the, and the false prophet. But man will be doing the best he can in the end times to form a Babylon-esque Tower of Babel, come together type of environment. Pastor Jeff already talked about the ID 2020. That is precisely what it is. When we as believers look at what's going on right now, People are trying to dig down deep in a collective, one world, globalist mindset to bring out the best of man. Now, here is where uh, I learned something. From can you my... can you stop, Mike, for a second, just for a second? If you belong to the cult that believes that the new King James is corrupt and only King James is the Holy Bible, and you keep you keep destroying this uh, the common section. Let me remind you that the Bible was not written in English; it was written in Hebrew, the Old Testament, and in Greek, the New Testament. So stop the nonsense, please, of giving the people the thought that the King James is holy and everything else is corrupt. No, there are better and worse translations, but the New King James is good enough and stop the nonsense and get off this chat and let people listen to this update. Please, Mike, continue. Right, so three digits. Well, we know that God is uh, three persons. He's the real deal. We know that Satan is very real, but he's not uh, perfect. We know that he's a fake. We know he's a fraud. We know he's a counterfeit. The best man can produce out of himself is not 777. Even if he gathers together with others, it's still not 777. The best of man is three sixes. In a sense, he becomes his own God. He worships himself. He worships each other. 
there's ultimately tolerance. Mira, one of the things that I realized, which I found really bizarre when I moved to Israel years ago, is I'd sit down in somebody's living room and they'd say, Mike, how's it going? I'd say, good. A few seconds would go by. They'd put their hand on me and say, Mike, how's it going? Oh, and I'm like, yeah, I already answered that question. I, I'm doing okay. And then the third time, they look at me with all sincerity and they say, hey, Mike, how you doing? And I'm like, you know, I have a headache and I had a bad night last night and I get really honest with them. There's the power of three in Judaism, even within the greeting system, that on the third time that you say something to someone within the culture, everyone knows that's when you're being really serious. Because of course you can ask how's it going, so you just give the pat answer, right? Now, in the Bible, there's precedent for this. Peter denied Jesus how many times? Three times. In that culture, the third time would have meant absolutely i don't know this man get away from me and everybody would have said okay how many times did jesus approach peter with the question do you love me as a means of forgiveness and his future mission that he stood in a forgiveness state i'm only bringing this up because the number is a number of man and in the end times whatever this mark is it's going to be man 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 it's basically you're saying it does not necessarily going to be 666 on your hand or on your forehead but whatever the mark is going to be will represent everything short of god uh, everything short of god the religious jews you said it yourself they wear what's called folks tefillin phylacteries there's a box with scripture on their forehead and then on their arm, and then they wrap it in a very specific order. That is designed to show people they are worshiping God in accordance to his word. Will there be a literal uh, mark? Maybe. I'm not saying there won't be. But I'm saying whatever it is, is going to be human-centered, worshiping something that does something to embody this whole Babylon-esque glory of man. And mm. it won't last because it'll for fall short. I see. God, and this is yeah, why, and, and so when, when we take, take us back to the verse, and you said the verse itself claims it's the number of man. Am I right? That's correct. And that's it why did. it led you to that conclusion. It did. And my observations of living in Israel and looking at the power of three deployed in multiple places of the scripture. I only gave you two examples. It says here, it is the number of man and his oh, number man. is okay so basically what you're saying is who is a man rep who is in a way almost satan incarnated in a way um uh, the antichrist is a man the false prophet is a man and satan himself wants to be like god but he will never be never and, and so you see all Man, as well as Satan, they're short of God. And um, you're saying it's a number that represents who is behind the attempt to want to be God or to, 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 to replace God and take over God's people. Am I, am I correct? Absolutely. And you've got to admit, gentlemen, and, and those who are listening, Satan may be evil. He may be arrogant, but he's not stupid. This is a plan that uh, is going to work. I mean, he is going to actually deceive people into thinking he can receive worship that belongs to God only, and the very best of man's arrogance, and him coming together as a community, giving away religious values and nationalistic values. You have this kind of cool Babylon-esque confusion of the nations coming together. It's, it's really, it's, it's such a counterfeit on a global level that I would, I mean, it's almost genius in a sense. Mm. And you've got to know what to look for with these signs. Otherwise, you're going to be clueless to your original question that you asked me, Amir. Yes. You've got to know this stuff. Yeah, Pastor Jeff, I want to ask you a question. Mm. The Bible says that the Lord, it, God, will allow him to overcome mm. the saints at that time. Mm. Yet, the Bible is telling us that the saints will not receive the mark of the beast. Hmm. So, my question to you is, 
how can he overtake them yet they will not allow they will not take the mark of the beast so help me understand exactly what you're getting at amir what are you what are you trying to uh no my point is this what basically they uh, they will not receive the mark of the beast the overtaking of the antichrist uh, of the of the saints at the time mm -hmm. when the world is talking uh, when the word of god is talking about it mm -hmm. has to do with basically wherever he sees them he destroys them and he beheads them is and and am i right yeah yeah i mean we know that obviously there's going to be tribulation saints. There's going to be the 144,000 who are going to, you know, be these, like, you know, I've heard it said, like Apostle Paul's, you know, believers from Israel, Jewish believers who are going to be preaching the gospel. And there's going to be many coming to a faith. But again, this is during the tribulation period. Yeah. And so there I, are people coming, but yet there is going to be, uh, it's not, it's, you know, Honestly, for me, the, my heart in, in talking about this now, here and now, is that if, if you're hearing us, if you're hearing this message right this minute, now is the time. Amen. Today is the day. Yes. This, this is, is, this is where I wanted us to get with, yeah. with this question. The, yeah. question the, the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, folks, listen, the mark of the beast is actually for those who are left behind and they have not been raptured to begin with. And the mark of the beast will not even be applied by those who will be, become believers as a result of the 144,000 um, polls or Billy Grahams, they say, or the two witnesses that will be in Jerusalem for that time. And so my point is very clear. When you become a believer during the tribulation, you will most likely be martyred you will be killed today if you become a believer most of the chances are that you are going to live and flourish and thrive and have the peace that surpasses all understanding and become a, an amazing radiating power to the rest of the surroundings to lead people to christ and if you push him away today and you're thinking to yourself I don't mind living my life today the way I want. And then if the tribulation comes and I see that the rapture is true and this whole thing of Antichrist is true, then I will consider. Let me tell you something. During the tribulation, there's only two options. One, to worship Satan. Two, to worship the Lord and to be killed. Now, if you worship Satan, you will be killed by God. And if you worship the Lord, you will be killed by the Antichrist because the Lord says he will have permission to overtake them. Let's let's make it very clear. And the Lord is not talking about Satan overtaking us, the church. What did Jesus say in in at, at, at the Caesarea Philippi? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church. You, you, if you remember that, um, <laughs> We are the church, and we are not a church that is being given the bad news that we are going to be killed now. Jesus said when he was praying to the Father, Father, I don't ask you to take them out of this world, but I ask you to keep them from evil. And on the other hand, Jesus is telling us, that those who are going to be left behind will be given to evil. And yet, they're, of course, at the very end, they will be res they resurrect and they will reign with Jesus, with all of us, of course. But look at the difference between the promises that we have as the bride of Christ that will be taken and not be, uh, and not be, um, uh, we're not going to be, uh, uh, going through this the bible says jesus talked to the church of philadelphia and he says in revelation chapter 3 before the rapture is being uh, uh described in revelation 4 1 when john is taken up he's telling the church of philadelphia which is probably the only church that you know gets all those compliments of those who are doing the right thing and going the right way he's telling them because 
you kept my word. I will keep you out of the hour of trial that is about to come upon this world. Not, I will keep you through, I will mm -hmm. keep you out. And let me conclude it also with one thing that a lot of people don't know. This is again a time when the church and Israel will have great distinction. On one hand, the church and the saints may have the, to pay that ultimate price of their life during that time. But on the other hand, Israel, in chapter 12, the chapter before chapter 13, is going to run to the desert. And the Lord will sustain them and protect them and provide for them for 1260 days. And of course, I'm talking about all those who did not receive the mark of the beast. Those who ran away, still not believers in Jesus, but they ran away because they're Jews that are not allowing a, a, a man to declare himself as God in the temple of God. So my point is, we are watching something interesting. Now a day in the world, the church is protected in a way, and Israel goes through a lot of trials, uh, even a genocide not too long ago. And then in the tribulation, the church that will be created, the saints of the tribulation, in a way, will go through that genocide while Israel is being kept. And then, of course, when it comes to the very end, both Israel, will they see Jesus come back, and the saints of the tribulation that will resurrect, all will, uh, you know, enjoy the, the physical presence of Jesus. Um, but... It's important to me, everyone that are watching us. And by the way, this is a record number of, of viewers that we, we had at the same time. Um, everyone that are, are watching right now, it is super important for the believers to teach the book of Revelation, to speak about those things and to study those things. Why? Because now, today, is the day of salvation. And this is why God, by His grace, has allowed us to know what the future is going to bring in order, A, for us to be comforted and B, for us to be the voice that is telling the world to repent. And gentlemen, do you have anything to add? Nick, do you have anything to add? Yeah, the, um, the taking of the mark, um, people think that it's going to be something that, oh, I, I didn't know. Um, it'll be a decision, it'll be a willful and conscious decision. You will know without shadow of a doubt that they, taking this mark, a mark could be a brand, um, it's a serving allegiance to another small god, uh, uh, the Antichrist in essence. And just like uh, the 144,000 Jews are, are marked by God on their foreheads, Satan, the counterfeiter, will want a mark for his followers and uh it'll be i i take it to be equal to what daniel went through in chapter three when king nebuchadnezzar set up a uh you know a large idol mm -hmm. 60 cubits by six cubits wide this was 90 yeah. feet tall mm -hmm. and everyone had to worship it yeah and he chose defiantly because he knew what that meant that yep. he's worshiping another god Mm -hmm. This is not just taking uh, a chip for commerce sake. This is a spiritual uh, decision that everyone will know. It won't be like, oh, I didn't know I made a mistake. You will know what you're doing. Um, and uh, Satan, the great counterfeiter, will uh, feign death, resurrection, the mm -hmm. whole thing. And he will be the God that everyone yes. will need to worship. And it'll be very difficult when there's a spirit of delusion. Yes. As Thessalonians talks about, yes. to not take that mark. In, isn't that interesting, gentlemen, that uh, Daniel chapter 7, verse 21, speaks of the same thing that Revelation did. And it says, he made war with the saints and prevailed against them. I'm, I feel like I quote Revelation, but I just quoted Daniel 7. Daniel is uh, no doubt the Old Testament book that speaks the most on the Antichrist and he appears all the way from chapter 3, but then further in chapter 7 and 8, and definitely chapter 9, 
chapter 11, chapter 12, we see him all throughout. Maybe one day I'm going to give a teaching on the end times through the lens of Daniel. But I do want you to understand, folks, that um, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, he will be able to prevail against the, the saints. And that is something contradicting to what the church is promised in uh, Matthew 16 when Jesus spoke about that. And that is why it's another reason why we have to make a great distinction between the church and the saints of the tribulation. The church, us, will be taken out of here before. And the saints of the tribulation are going to go through that. And uh, this is the, 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 that is why God told us to comfort one another and encourage one another and, 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 and edify one another with these words. The words uh, and the promises of the rapture are so edifying and comforting because we are not to go through the tribulation. What is the encouraging message in you're going to be beheaded, but be of good cheer? Mm. I have overcome the world. Yeah, Amir, I mean, as you say that, exactly, you know, as the bride of Christ, right? The one, you know, we are not appointed unto wrath as his bride. You know, he took it for us. That's the beauty. And and I just want to encourage, I think, you know, we've already said, obviously, if you don't know the Lord today, today is the day Amen. of salvation. But for those who do know him and, and they do see the news and, the, and they do see the, you know, ID 2020s and the things like this that are coming. We knew, we've been told this stuff is coming, that the, the pieces are being put in place for what is going to happen yes. eventually. But here and now, I feel like there's there's a lot of fear. There's a yes. lot of fear right now because there's a lot of unknowns and, and there's a lot of challenges that a lot of people are facing. And I just want to, again, just encourage all of us that we want to keep our eyes on Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher. You know, and if we keep our eyes on him, he's going to keep us in perfect peace as our mind is set on him because we really need to trust in him. I think about, you know, the story of Peter, right? There he was doing the impossible, something that, you know, seemed like it couldn't be done, being above the circumstances of the situation, walking on water. And as soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, that's when things went, well, as we say here in England, pear-shaped. Um, that's where, you know, things he started to sink. And I just feel for my, my brothers, my sisters who, who are – who are feeling it right now, just that they keep their eyes on Jesus, keep looking up, keep, you know, we've been raised with him, we're, and he's seated, he's seated on his throne right now, he's oh, still yes. seated, he's not yes. pacing, he's not worried, he knows, you know, and he told us this was coming, so we can really rest and yes. trust him in, in that. Yes. So, let's uh, wrap it up by saying this, the rapture is around the corner, by all means. The tribulation is for those who are left behind, not for us. The mark of the beast is going to be a terrible mark of allegiance to Satan, and by which you can also do commerce, become a, a political uh, player, as well as a worshiper of Satan himself. And it is not for us. It's important that we understand no matter what is being presented while we're still here, the mark of the beast is not for us. Now, we're watching everything shaping and forming, and, and the human mind is getting used to all of those things. And so by the time they come, it, nobody's going to be surprised. However, for us, we have other things to, to uh, think of. If, if you indeed were raised with Christ, then seek those things which are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. I know there's a lot of people that have a problem with the concept of the rapture. Read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and tell me. You read 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and tell me. And even by ways of understand what John himself said to um, Martha. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He said, look, he uh, that, um, uh, you know, died um, will resurrect and he who is not dead yet, you know, will not die again, basically. And, and this is the ultimate token of the, of the rapture. That's exactly what Paul talked about. 
the dead in Christ will rise first. And then we that are alive and well, we're not going to die. We will be taken. Uh, and, 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 and you have to remember that Jesus promised that resurrection. He promised that rapture. This was something he promised while he was here. And it's something that he promised to Paul. And Paul communicated that to the worried congregation of Christians in Thessaloniki. Um, Mike. Would you do us all the honor of concluding this 50 minutes long update so far with a prayer and invite people around the world to receive the Lord as their savior? So I will close with a challenge and then we'll pray. Yes. My challenge is, is we can learn a lot from our Jewish friends that put the phylacteries on the head and on the, hand, on the arm. That's exactly where the mark of the beast is to be put. Yes. But for us, we worship God in our mind. This is the control center. We dedicate our minds to the Lord so that we can make good decisions. Once those decisions are made, we act with our arms, with our lifestyle. And so I'm going to be praying right now that instead of 666, which is man, 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 worship of man, and whatever we want to worship because we're in control, we're giving control over to Jesus. Amen. Jesus gets control of our mind. Amen. Jesus gets control over all of the things that we do so that people can see Jesus in us yes. in these last days. Yes. And I would, I would say before you pray, Mike, guys, when Mike is over, I, I want to encourage all of you to um, share this message with as many people as possible. Let's go. Let's pray. My friend, you're in this room today watching this video, or you came to this video, if it's on YouTube or Facebook, and you're watching here, and you could have been watching any other video, yet you're watching this one. And right now, I'm gonna ask you to surrender and come clean and say in your heart to Jesus, I am so sorry for my sins and for my misguided lifestyle. Please forgive me. And if you've come this far, my friend, go all the way and just say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I want you to be the Lord of my life, not myself. I want you to take control over my mind and my actions so that I can live your purposes here on earth. I give my whole life to you. Come into me and allow me to experience salvation and relationship with you. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. I want to thank you for uh, logging in and for being with us. Important message. By all means, share it with as many people as you can. Thank you. We love you all. Shalom from Galilee in Israel. Shalom from uh, Canada, from uh, the U.S. and from the U.K. We pray also that uh, these days will... Uh, uh, not uh, be too frightful, uh, frightening to you, you, that you will rely on the ultimate peace of the Prince of Peace, Sar Shalom. And in just uh, uh, a few hours, we're going to post something very nice about Sar Shalom.